Zen, the biggest mystery in my life. I could either let the questions I had linger in the back of my mind, or turn the light around and explore the mystery for myself. I guess I was ready to explore. Now every day, I meditate for three hours. I want to show you why. Why it makes the memories here so much richer, the novelty more interesting, and the connections more intense. I used to have this dream goal of meditating for three hours, and now that's what I'm doing every day. This has completely changed who I am through changing my state of mind. think about it every single day. Zen just had everything for me. A rich, ancient history, a fascinating community of people, traditions, and practices. It gave me a feeling of wonder with being alive. I was ready to devote my life to this. There was something here, right here, I'd never seen before. So that's what I've been doing. A month ago, I moved to Bogota, Colombia, easily the most hectic city I've ever lived in. And still each day, I find three hours to sit in Zaza. There's an absurd amount that I'm confused about, but there's also a huge amount that I've learned from meditating for the equivalent of a part-time job each week. So how does one fit in three hours of meditation a day? Well, the only place I can meditate in this hostel is my room, despite the three other people that also live there. I lay down my bedsheet, then my jacket, then my pillow, and sit in front of this white wall. There's always a reggaeton beat in the background, always people walking right outside. I get interrupted all of the time. Because I don't have the luxury of a zendo and a room full of monks anymore, this all feels like a test. Every day it's, do I really want to do this. But every day the answer is yes. I really want to do this. And anyone from a kid to a monk will have no problem doing what they really want to do. When I first got here though, I remember talking with a group of people from the hostel who said that they didn't have time to meditate while traveling. And you know, I, I agreed with them. I thought that I had the worst conditions possible being in a shared hostel in Bogota, Colombia with no time left over traveling to sit and meditate. You know, it was hard to find like 20 minutes. I decided I would try it once. Meditate for three hours today and just see how it goes. And I loved it. Then I tried it the next day and I loved it more. It became a routine eventually, and it started from my eagerness to explore this mystery, and also just the practical enjoyment from Zazen. Zazen meditation is simple and unique. Your eyes are open. You hold your hands on top of one another, sit in a half lotus, and take subtle breaths through your nose. I expand my sight into my peripheral. I listen to all sound. I grow aware of the subtle sensations of breath and I engage myself in non-thinking, quieting the formal praxis of the mind that just aren't really particularly useful here. The novelty of traveling is immense. A new continent, new language, new culture, new life experiences, some great, some awful. I can very easily remain in the theoretical. I can judge and rate each day. I can compare and contrast and lose sight of the actual process of living. And then there's stillness the unchanging reality, waiting patiently beneath all that. The ground state I can find my way back to each day. It's hard to explain, but I just love it. Reality by itself is so rich. It goes so deep. I want to feel it in every pore, every breath, confirmation of life. So last week, I officially bought a motorcycle here in Colombia. I can now travel anywhere I want in the country with just me and my camera. This motorcycle was so damn expensive, so there's obviously a ton of risk involved with that. My first day where I had the motorcycle, I wanted to take it up to the mountains to eat some fruit and watch the sunset. When I was driving up to the mountains, there was this one 
crazy steep hill that merged directly onto the highway with this ditch to the right. When I was driving up that hill, I stalled the motor at the very top and fell over sideways and almost into the ditch. When I picked the motorcycle back up, I realized I had broken the throttle. I was barely, barely able to drive the motorcycle back home, and I almost lost the whole motorcycle into the ditch. On my way home, driving this barely working motorcycle, I decided to pull over and eat the fruit that I'd planned on eating at the mountain. I remember looking over just the absolute chaos of the city and thinking, I have so much to lose right now. If something happened to my laptop, it would destroy me. If I lose this motorcycle, I would be devastated. If my hard drives crashed and I lost all my footage from Italy, I'd lose my mind. And if something happens to my camera gear, I don't know what I'd do. I realized that my biggest risk I had was my attachment to these objects. I needed something, I needed a practice that could transcend the transient nature of all things. An epiphany of risk made me realize the importance of stillness. The necessity of creating a harmony with life that can ebb and flow together. Logically, you know, it's just too risky for me to experience the intense highs and lows of each day without also experiencing something which is neither. And at times, I imagine the next year. How will three hours of meditation each day change my state of mind? Well, I'm so, so excited to find out. <laughs>